Hello, hello. Welcome everyone to the uh, first of many Ubuntu Snappy clinics. I'm here with um, Michael Vogt. And we're also joined by Sergio. Sorry, I was looking at IRC. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So yeah, as I said, um, this is going to be the f uh, this is the first of, of many uh, snappy clinics. The idea is that we get together, um, do some demonstrations, um, ex explain snappy and technologies around it. Um, it's going to be a regular thing, and we're going to do uh, demos, show really good examples, and um, most of all, answer all your questions. Um, for those of you who are joining through UbuntuOnAir.com, there's this chat widget below the video feed where you just enter your favorite nickname, hit the connect button, and then you can talk to us. You can ask all the questions. If you have feedback, uh, let us know as well. And um, yeah, we're going to adapt the format over time and just see what works well and also incorporate all your all your feedback. Um, right. Yeah, today we wanted to talk about Snapcraft because uh, yesterday we had our first, uh, no, we had uh, the second release actually, uh, the Nota 2 release, and it's the best thing ever, right? Um, and um, so what is Snapcraft about? Do, do any of you want to talk a bit about how the plans for Snapcraft came together? Well, the basic idea is to snap the world. That is the basic idea of Snapcraft. Um, one of the, the the things or objectives of it is to make it easy to do that, and um, it does that by by having this uh, simple and elegant uh, language where you describe um, components, which we call parts, and um, they can pull in sources independently. Each part works independently to some extent, and each part has a type which basically tells uh, what to do with those sources. Um, all the parts have a life cycle associated to them and um, that actually makes uh, creating like a sort of like building blocks to to create snaps in the end. Um, we are we are getting there and trying to get a really polished uh, solution for this and um, that's where we're at. <laughs> I don't know if I know anything else about it but that's all I have to say for now. Brilliant. Um, do you have an example for what parts could be? Like, what kind of stuff would I want to put into a into a snap? Right. So, um, you like a part is a very generic sort of thing, and it's it's deliberately a, a very generic way. So one 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 part could be a, a libreadline line library that your project may need. Right. And you are mm -hmm. writing your, I don't know shell like application and you need you need readline so lib readline would be would be a part to use but it can be much more complex i mean um uh, you you could have a part for uh, for jdk for example um or basically any number of basically what what a source dependency is right now is probably a part but it's more generic because you can have for example download Binary stuff as a part too. I mean, it's it's not limited to stuff that you need to build, and um, it it really tries to it really tries to make it easy to get the, your dependencies from everywhere. I mean, it 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 can pull from GitHub, it can pull from the Debian archive. You can you can use step packages and and extract relevant content. Um, it is you know you can you can pull from arbitrary um, version control systems. It is very nice and flexible. And just looking back at what we did like ten years ago with with Ubuntu, if you were were shipping software, it's it's quite different nowadays. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the world has 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 changed, right? I mean, um, the, it, it 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 turned out that ISVs and and people who build complex stacks, they or complex software, they really want to control the entire stack. I mean, they they don't. Uh, Daniel, you muted yourself. Sorry. Oh, just, sorry for interrupting, but uh, you, you you were muted for the last. Yeah, I was sorry. I was. 10 10 seconds. Seconds. You were muted. Oh, sorry. Okay. So um, 
so I was saying, like, take take Mozilla as an example. I mean, they are building this fantastic web browser, and they they put an awful lot of work into QA, but they they rely on a lot of complex software, right? I mean, they use all sorts of libraries like SQLite. I don't know all all this stuff, and they they QA against their version of the library. So um, they are really keen on shipping a, basically a bundled bundled piece of software that. It's proven to it's work. It's proven to work exactly, yeah. and I mean, this is this is what we are trying to achieve with uh, Snappy and um, the Snap format. I mean, making it really easy to bundle your stuff, and Snapcraft is a way to make building Snaps much much simpler. Um, in some way, it's a it's a meta build system really, um, but in mm -hmm. in other ways, it's it's just a fun and simple way to to you know achieve your goal, which is. Package your software. I mean, nobody nobody likes packaging, right? Everybody likes packages, but nobody likes doing this work yeah. of packaging because, yeah. frankly, it's it's not very interesting. Yeah. So, and also to to have it happen uh, reproducibly and and um, I mean, one of the big things that changed with with Snappy, I mean, the phone before beforehand and, and now Snappy is that we have uh, confinement in place so that. Uh, we can we can rest assured that everything is going to to work and it's not going to access anything it it shouldn't so um that that makes it a lot easier to um bundle this software upload it to the store get get it automatically reviewed and, and checked and everything and then um approved one thing i also never really liked about um ubuntu and debian packaging was that um was that you, we had a lot of cargo culted code stuff you you copied from somewhere and you were just happy if it worked because as you said nobody really likes dealing with that kind of stuff you are happy if it works and then never touch it again and with um, Snapcraft that became a lot a lot easier um, do you have any more things we should say as an introduction or should we just show people what Snapcraft is like what it can do anything else I guess the the showing is is in order. Sorry, what's that? that oh, I guess we should start showing people what it looks like. Yeah, sure. Do do you want to it. do you want to show an example, or shall I? Uh, you can start, and I can go on with a a different one and explain the, the more complex parts. Right. So. Yeah. Let us know on IRC if the font is big enough. If that's all right, if that looks good for you. Um, OK. Um, I think that should be readable, right? Good. OK, so this is a, a YAML file. This is the one defining um file you, you have to to um keep around to let all the packaging all the deployment everything everything work um the obvious parts are name version vendor that's also the kind of stuff or and description that's the kind of stuff you would normally also have in a debian or ubuntu package it's pretty straightforward um do you want to talk about the binaries section, maybe, or sure, the sure. parts? Okay, so, so, um, so GoDD is, is just basically a DD clone written in Go that has some some additional nice properties, which, um, like for example, it shows actually shows progress during writing. It automatically writes in sync mode, so you don't need to sync afterwards and this kind of stuff. So, um, so, in Snapcraft, you define what should go in your in your snap. And one way of doing this is by defining what kind of binaries you want to you want to have in your in your package. And um, in this example, there is the package go GoDD. And when you call GoDD, you should it should just exec bin GoDD. So that's that's pretty straightforward. So every time you have binaries that you want to be available via CLI, just list them in the binary section. Do you want to continue with parts? Cool, or? cool. Um, yeah, 
So parts, as Sergio ex explained earlier, you can define many, many parts in, um, in your Snapcraft declaration. Um, each of them is described by a type, um, which is basically the, the plugin that is, is used for, um, for this part. Um, in this case, it's a, it's a Go project. Um, we specify the source. So in this case, it's just get it from, from GitHub. And um, that in itself would normally make sure that um, you get the source from GitHub, OK? And then the package is built, and, and, and that's that. So um, did we cover the individual stages of a? No, we didn't, OK. Um, so first of all, um, we do, we're in the pull phase. That's uh, obviously getting it from GitHub. During the build phase, we have all the compilation, everything that happens there. Um, you could think of it as as in a Java in the Java world. You would have aren't running in um, in the Python world. You would have set up tools. You would exercise all of the build machinery. And um, next up would be the stage um, stage, where uh, the staging stage where you basically take um, for all the parts you that you have, um, every, all the build parts, you copy over the, the, the pieces that, that need to show up in the, in the package later on. And in the snap part, the actual snap is built, right? Exactly, exactly. So the stage part is the stage stage is or the staging stage is is kind of like the pre-final. It's a bit like a like a testing. You can you can go into this file system tree. You can explore. You can play around. But the snap stage itself, the final stage, this is where the actual snap is assembled. And they are two distinct directories. So, so um, for example, in your stage, or in your staging stage, you may you may have some additional files still in your in your source to make just exploring easier or your different binaries for example but in the snap you you only select what you really want to have in the snap and um, this is actually visible here in the in the parts definition like in the snap colon line in the list mm -hmm. afterwards only exactly these files will be in the snap so it's just just what you need and just what you want yeah so in this case we're being overly specific like normally we would bundle uh, a whole lot more, like everything that is, is uh, gets pulled in through uh, libgu dev and isn't part of the of the base install. Um, but here we say, OK, only include the stuff I'm, I'm, I'm specifying here. Uh, there could be a concern because of download size and, and so on, or stuff you would just want to exclude from, from, from the snap from the build. Right. I think um, that's pretty. Uh yeah, I want to add a couple of things, if I can. Um, sure. There, uh, about parts, there are a couple of key um, key words that uh, every part has. It doesn't matter if it's implemented by Snapcraft itself and not by the plugins providing the type. Like in there, uh, source is a key provided by the, the, the type of the part, but stage packages and snap are provided by Snapcraft itself. So every part, no matter what, has um, stage packages snap and there are a couple more not mentioned there which we can look into later which are file sets there's a stage keyword and there's an organized keyword and uh by default uh the you, you can see there's a snap uh, entry uh, keyword there uh, mentioning those files are supposed to be copied over to the to the snap phase or stage um, there's also a stage one, which by default is basically globbing all files for every part and putting them there. But you can also um, um, filter that phase stage. That's all. Cool. All right, and um, I mean you've you've seen how how brief the 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 Snapcraft YAML file is. It's it's really just what you need. It's it's brilliant, and um, all you need to do to to actually build the the snap is run Snapcraft. Uh, sorry, obviously you need to run it in the right directory, and yeah, here you can see how it um, pulls all the the relevant 
packages first. This takes a little bit. Almost there. So this is an interesting example because um, it, uh, it requires libgudev, which itself requires a bunch of support libraries. And Snapcraft is, is clever enough to automatically figure this out, and it will download what, what needs to get downloaded, and it, it will extract it into the stage directory so that, um, or in the parts directory, so that building um, is, actually, is actually possible. Um, because GoDD requires the package config file, for example, of libgudev. Um, and this is this is nicely nicely set up now. In this stage, it would normally also get stuff from from GitHub and from yes, from exactly. Bazaar and, and and other parts as well. Yes, exactly like you said. Like here, you can see that it's now getting the Go dependencies. So it is really a way of, you know, getting getting some stuff from the archive because it's convenient to get stuff from the archive and you won't do archive because it's, you know, it's huge and it contains lots of stuff. But then in the Go world, you also have a lot of dependencies that are not packaged, that are available using the native Go package management system. And I mean, the same is true for Node, for example, and for for, for Python with uh, pip. So um, by by allowing, by having a flexible system that, that you can pull pieces from, from all over the place, this makes it very powerful. And what, what I really like is that we, we have this separation between, um, for example, uh, libgudev is something we use here, but um, if you as an upstream maintainer or, or somebody who's writing the software believe that you don't need any changes to it, you, you absolutely trust the Ubuntu world to take care of it, you just put it into state packages and, and that's it. Uh, so you can always um, define what you feel should be, um, should be part of your snap and what you take from, from elsewhere. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe it's worth mentioning that you don't have to you don't have to use the archive, right? I mean, you could build your own uh, uh, GUDEV as well, like from source. You could, for example, or from I don't know wherever it lives, like git.gnome.org, or I don't know. But Sergio, you wanted to come in as well. I was going to say exactly the same thing you said. So oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get the feeling you've been working together for some time already. <laughs> All right. So just a UI clarification there. Um, I don't know if everyone, anyone paid attention, but anything that's in bold there was basically each the each part going through the stages it had. So it's very clear what each output of every command is, is about. Uh, right now we are um, showing what every part is doing. Um, we might silence it a bit later and, and provide a verbose option, but right now it is like this, too, so people can get a grasp of, of what exactly uh, Snapcraft is doing itself. Makes perfect sense. OK. Um, yeah, if we want to have a quick look at what the package contains, we can just um, use the package minus C. And it is what we specified earlier. Um, we have the it bin go dd and then the, just the libraries we we needed. Um, anything else about this example? Yeah, it's inter it's interesting to note that some of the some files were auto generated by Snapcraft, which is which is rather nice. Like um, you will see, it it wrote a, a, a tiny wrapper file that ensures that the right environment is is set. Now this is not so relevant for Go. But it is relevant for C applications that may need a different LD library path. Um, it's also nice to see that the entire meta directory, like all the stuff that Snappy itself needs, is already written for you. Um, and of course, 
um, it contains exactly the files we specified earlier. Cool. Um, what's really nice as well about uh, Snapcraft is that it comes with Snapcraft, uh, Snapcraft run. Um, what it does is um, it runs an Ubuntu Snappy call instance in a VM, uh, fires it up, and then copies the snap over. And then you can inspect and, and check if, if everything is, is um, working as expected or if you need to, to make any changes. This uh, takes a little bit. OK, VM is started. And now uh, snappy list will give us all the snaps which are installed. You can see GoDD. And if we would run it, um, obviously, GoDD DD needs an, um, an image we want to, to copy somewhere to DD somewhere. Uh, but as you can see, it is working. Right. Um, we have a, another example. Uh, can I just, do you think I should answer it? There's a couple of questions on IRC. Oh, yeah, sure. So one was the asterisk at the end of the of the, um, the file name, and that basically means to go up. Um, so it will glob those file names uh, with the asterisk. And uh, the other special uh, meaning um, uh, character you can add is, is the dash, the minus sign, at the beginning of the file to add an exclusion. Uh, we can dive into an example about that later. And the other uh, question is, um, can I use language packages as parts, like Python pip packages? I'm not sure if I understand the question correctly, but you can use um, pip package. Uh, you can you, you can use PyPy through pip uh, as a, a source of of uh, for parts. Cool. All right. Um, another quick example. Um, we have another piece of software called Go Paste. It's a like a paste bin written in Go something, and the Snapcraft YAML looks like this. Um, it's very much what we saw earlier. Uh, this time we don't have the um, file set inclusion exclusion bits in there, but we have a new section in there, and it's about services. Do you maybe talk a bit about what's happening there? Sure. So, um, so a service is, is basically a, a daemon that you want to run, and um, it's it, this makes it really easy to start to set daemons. Um, and all you need to do is um, you give it a name. In this case, it's go paste. You give it a description. Well, this is a, a bit of a, <laughs> of a short description, right? I mean, usually you would have a little bit more. And, and you tell it how to start it. Um, you can also tell it how to stop it if, if it needs a different stop command. Um, and, and that's it. That's enough for you to create your, your daemon, um, your, your, you know, your long running process. Um, and, and parts is even shorter than it was in the other example, because this is a, a pure Go project. It doesn't have any external dependencies. So it will, all, it will only get the stuff from using the internal Go package management system, um, or well, it's a, the source, you know, acquire system, and um, it will create one static binary, um, which which means you don't even have to specify what you want to have in your snap because it will just include by default all that you build, and um, and that's that's it. Sergio, do you want to do you want to add anything here? Um. Maybe not exactly related to what you just mentioned, but uh, the, if you make mistakes in this YAML and and and, and run Snapcraft, you will get um, it's it's not exactly the best error message right now. It will get better, but it will it will be um, uh, verify validated against um, a, a, a JSON spec um, we uh, we wrote specifically for Snapcraft, and uh, so if you make a mistake with regards to attributes that you write in there, um, it will all be taken care of for you. So you'll get early notification about the problems, which is one of the issues we've been having with um, just using Snappy itself to build packages where we add keys that don't make sense or are ignored. And then when we go to the system, it's kind of like too late in, in, in 
in the development phase to figure out that you basically screwed up your your definitions. That's all. Cool. Um, so yeah, this example, um, yeah, we're probably not going to go through this in 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 more detail. As you can see, it's it's building. We could now inspect it and just see what what um, other files are in, installed as well. But um, uh, the good thing is, all these examples are part of the Snapcraft code. So if you just branch lp colon Snapcraft, uh, you get all the goodness in there, goodness in there for free. Um, I had a quick other example um, where I just wanted to use um, binaries which were already built in Ubuntu and just ship them as a as a package. So um, because I like the uh, bwmng command, I just wanted to 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 snap it up. Just take uh, what was built in in the archive. So I use uh, stage packages at, at the bottom here and um, type go is a bit of a, a bit of a workaround, right? Yeah, yeah. We, we were basically faking it. We just said try go, whatever because we know that uh, the package is already built and that we're going to just include it as it is, just the the uh, the binary in the package, and that's it. Yeah, what, what we really will have here at some point, like next release will be a null type or even just omitting the type and it will just do the right thing. Maybe that's even possible right now. I'm not sure, Sergio, what, what would happen if we just omit the type? So no, the type has to be there. Um, I'll I'll show an example about what the what uh, there's a special meaning to type. Um, there's one thing that wasn't hasn't been mentioned, but um, did we show ordering yet? Uh, sorry, what's that? Did we show ordering part ordering the after keyword? Okay, I'll I'll, I'll reserve myself until after that. Yeah, I'll I'll be quick. Um, so um, if we run. Snapcraft, it's just going to um, pull all the rev relevant files from uh, from the archive. That, as you can see, is always uh, taking a little bit, and then um, it's going to put them into the package. Um, in this case, we're going to run into a small problem, um, um, but you're going to see it if we run Snapcraft run. The package is built, everything went fine. Um, but if we want to uh, run it in the VM, um, yeah, it takes a little bit to, to fire it up here. Um, we're going to run into a problem because um, it doesn't have access to, to uh, files in, in PROC because it wants to monitor the, the network traffic and so on. Almost there, almost there. Copying the snap over. Yep. And if we want to run it, we, it, we get permission denied. So um, what we do is, uh, in, in our case, because we, we want to just have a package for, for our own sake, we just add security template unconfined, save it, and run Snapcraft again. Uh, Snapcraft force. This will um, basically force a, a rebuild of all the phases we mentioned earlier, and um, and then can copy it over again, and it's and it's it, it's going to to work. Um, this makes it really nice to iterate quickly on a on a snap, especially if you have have multiple parts and you have parts that maybe uh, depend on each other. Um, in that case, it's 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 much easier um, as opposed to building the snap and then copying it manually somewhere and then firing up a VM or copying it on on onto your um, Raspberry Pi or or whatnot. I, I find I find this very easy to use Snapcraft and then Snapcraft run. So I'm going to ask you, answer a question while uh, this runs, which seems it's stalled. <laughs> The question is, uh, can you go into more detail about stage packages? I don't understand whether you have to have them or they are helpful but optional. They are indeed optional and they are indeed helpful. 
uh, especially if you come from the Ubuntu world where you know everything is packaged and want to use uh, special packages to enhance or, or make your maybe port and enablement or new products or application uh, more useful in a quick way. And you know there's a dependency that will solve your, your issues, which you don't have to go in and create a part for yourself. You can just add a stage package entry into your, um, into your part. What that stage package uh, entry will do is basically fetch the dip files and a certain, to a certain extent, its dependencies, not all of them, but its dependencies, and unpack those into your part's private um, directory. Uh, one thing that wasn't mentioned is that each part has a private a private area. So when you do a pull, you get your you get um, for a part, you get it will land into parts the part name slash uh, source. When you do a a build, uh, well, build will take place from. Uh, that's the same directory slash build. The installation will go into slash install. And what these stage packages will do is basically have those in, inside the uh, installation directory so you can use those um, and, and basically make a complete part if you need it. You don't have to have it. Cool. Um, you also had a, um, something you wanted to, to show off. Oh, right. Oh, you canceled the video. Right. Uh, let's see if I can share. My, my network connection is a lot worse than yours. So uh, <laughs> uh, let's see if this works out. Uh, maybe I need to make the fonts bigger. Or am I good? Yeah, maybe just one notch. Sure. Brilliant. Okay, so so one thing that wasn't mentioned in earlier is the oh, is uh, wiki parts. What are what are we uh, wiki parts? Um, there's a, those are basically uh, remote remote parts that uh, you can use to enhance your snap that someone else did for you already, and you can get bootstrapped it real quick. How does that work? So this is a very simple download or snap um, using curl as, as its base library for it. And um, basically, it's just a test. But um, as you can see here in, in, in the main part, you, there's, it, it was, it's a make project. Um, the source is here locally, and but I don't have curl defined anywhere, so I, I do. But I do have this after keyword here that says curl. If this this is a part name curl, if curl was were to be defined here with a set of rules, it all, all would be um, there would be no special meaning to what I want to say. <laughs> but if you if you go and look into Did I have links installed? No. No. Well. well, this is the URL basically for where to find that part. This will be all HTML, it'll be horrible. Um, just give me one second to get the raw syntax. Hmm. Well, I'm not. Allowed. I don't know what's going on. But if you if you go to, I'll just paste it on the wiki. If you go, to, oh, sorry, on the on the <laughs> IRC channel. If you if you go to this site there, you'll see that um, we have the curl part defined, um, which you can actually, if you wanted to, you can just copy and paste that into your locally. And if not, the after keyboard will notice that that curl part is not defined locally and will go and fetch into the wiki. 
Uh, one one of the attributes of parts is actually that it should be easy easily be easily shareable, so it should be easy to copy paste stuff and and into your own part. Um, so uh, this part, I'm not sure if I should run this, but uh, it might take long. But if I run this, oh, it's already created. Um, if I run this, uh, what will happen is that that part will be searched for in the wiki. And that's basically all it is. There you see pulling curl. I have no curl defined there locally. And we'll build it, as, as you can see. Um, so that's with all I have to say about the after keyword. Um, then the other thing is um, someone asked about PyPy and or PIP. This, uh, this uh, is a more complex example. It's in the examples. Um, uh, package or directory you can if you have the the, the tools ppa uh, ppa colon snappy dev snappy slash uh, dash dev slash tools uh, you can install snapcraft uh, dash examples or you can go to the sources and look them up as well either is fine um, you can find all these examples this example is also the the basis for what is the on developer ubuntu.com uh, so you can pretty much follow this up, except for one thing, which is this, this config entry right here, um, which adds some smarts to your Snap itself. That's part of Snappy, um, the Snappy architecture, and not not so much about uh, Snapcraft itself. But I'll, I'll go into details about that in a bit. So um, getting, I want to go into a more complex example, and uh, so here's this config part I. I well, it's not a more complex example. It's one using Python 3 project. This Python 3 project, um, which is defined locally there, is has a setup.py, which has install requires pyaml. Uh, Snapcraft takes care of that for you. Um, if you want it, you could add um, a requirements here and point it to your local requirements. TXT, and it will also fetch all your requirements if you wanted to. Um, so that's about Python. Uh, going into the uh, this CAM part here, I wanted to. It's a Go project. It's not that complicated, but it is a very um, personalized part I, uh, where it, it can well it it grabs this the source here to create a. a uh, a, a web server, it uses the stage package to grab this Ubuntu package specifically. And it has this concept called file sets I mentioned earlier. File sets are, are basically um, uh, what do you call these? Variables that you can use to, to in include uh, uh, a certain set of files or exclude them in, in the different, um, in the stage and snap keywords. So basically, I have the FS webcam file set. These can be any names. And I, I, I want to include user bin webcam, lib, and user lib. And I have this other one called go server. I want to include bin slash golang everything. So in stage, I basically say I want these two things. I don't want anything else from the, that is personal to the part. And in snap, yeah, give me the same thing. Give me FS webcam, which I defined above. And give me go web server, which I find above. Go server, which I find above. And here's a, uh, an ex exclusion which says don't put anything from user share doc because of course if you bring a Debian package, um, you'll, you'll have all this stuff that is basically not very useful for Snap. And um, I was asked there a couple of days ago why don't we do this automatically? And one of the reasons is maybe you do want it, so we don't want to make that choice for you. Um, that is up to you. Um, nothing will break if that is included, but you can make a cleaner snap if you exclude it. And um, I guess that's all I have. Um, oh, sorry. Just going to mention the config. So there's a in snapgraph.yaml. I mentioned this config. This config is basically an entry to what I want to be uh, my configuration hook for Snappy itself. And um, in this, I it's basically taken out of the config part. So if I if I go to a running system, which I already um, where's my 
I already have everything built here because this will take a while to show live. Um, anything to add, Michael or Daniel? Sorry, what's that? Anything to add while this boots? No, um, um, yeah, I saw a really uh, nice example earlier um, also using a config config hooks for uh, user configuration and, and stuff. Um, it's, it's, it's very, very flexi flexible and Right, so um, snappy config is something specific to 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 the the snappy architecture. It's like you can query. Well, this is now uh, this is basically the config for Ubuntu core, and I wrote a config for hook for webcam web UI, which basically has only one entry, which is the interval I want for my snapshots for web. Uh, from FS webcam. Um, that's all it does, but you can do, um, so config, this is out of Snapgraph's scope itself, but configs are basically um, the interaction point to configure snaps because every snap lives in its isolated own uh, world. And uh, we need a, a language to communicate how we want that snap to work if the author of the snap allows for that. And that's all I have to show uh, precisely. I don't know if there's anything specific you want me to show, or should we just go to questions? Yeah, I think we could um, answer a couple of questions still. Um, some of them were answered on uh, IRC already. One of them was uh, multi-arch support and um, cross-compilation. Um, that's not that's not quite there yet. Um, that was answered on IRC. And here was a question from Yashi. Uh, snap packages are meant to be self-contained, meaning there shouldn't be any dependencies like devs. What is the current plan to support basic libraries like libc or libz for dependencies from existing C applications? Are we going to have API versions levels like Android? Um, yeah. Basically, uh, Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I, I can go. Uh, so we don't need API levels like Android because um, the Ubuntu releases. So we target Ubuntu releases. And um, each uh, snap is supposed to work uh, perfectly in, in its life cycle in that release. And the releases are very long term. It's core, so it's very easy to maintain. Uh, uh, support for, for the long term, contrary to Ubuntu, or as a very complex Ubuntu itself, like as we know, like desktop server, where we have a complex base of dependencies and uh, security up, providing security updates and SRUs for that is a lot more complex and something that is very core, like Ubuntu core. So we do plan to support this uh, long term and each um, snap, if you, if you ever uploaded a snap to the store, you can see where to target your snap. So in, in, this, in essence, you can upload multiple versions to different, uh, you can upload multiple versions to your, of your snap targeting different releases, or you can say you want to target multiple releases, but it, it's basically up to you to, to verify that it would work. Uh, Snapcraft is, is going to have an entry to, to say what tar release you want to target. Uh, so it, it can eventually verify that it is, you can locally verify it is working fine. Uh, Daniel, you're talking, or is it? No, no. Um, I think that's that's fine. That's that's it. Um, yeah. If you have any last questions, get them in now. Uh, obviously, we're going to stick around on 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 IRC, so you can ask us there. Um, one thing we should probably still cover is where you get um where you get Snapcraft. Um. Obviously, you can you can just branch it off from from uh, from Launchpad. Just do bizarre branch lp colon snapcraft, or um, there's also two PPAs. One of them um, is the proposed PPA that's before running the test machinery on it, and the other one is the tools PPA. So uh, that's 
PPA colon snappy dash dev slash tools. But um, we have this also noted down on developer.ubuntu.com slash snappy. That's where all the snappy documentation lives and all the snapcraft documentation as well. Um, yeah, basically these guys have been have been very uh, busy in the last days to get the not a, not point two release out. Um, in the next few weeks, there's going to be more examples, more documentation, more uh, more materials in in general. But you can always ask on on IRC. That's the hash snappy on Freenode or uh, the, the snappy mailing lists. Just checking uh, IRC real quick. Well, anything you wanted to still to mention? I just wanted to say, like, I, I think 0 0.2, you know, it's a low version number, but it's it's a pretty good release. I mean, we, we put a ton of effort into refining it. Like, we talked about basically every YAML key, refined the user experience just try to make sure that it's really, you know, streamlined and, and, and straightforward. Um, and um, I, I think we we pretty much nailed the format now. I mean, I think we are pretty confident in that this YAML is, you know, the final the final YAML. Um, and um, from now on, I expect, you know, bug fixes. I mean, there are some corner cases where it's still exploding sometimes or not, not showing as nice um, messages as it should be. And of course, like you know, much more, much more parts. That's that's the next big focus. And more plugins, more to plugins, be added. more more plugins, more parts. The wiki expanding, and the wiki uh, parts. I mean, I, I don't know, Sergio. What what do you have in mind for the next as the next steps? Right. So there are a couple of things. If anyone wants to get into Snapcraft and feels bored, there's easy things you can do. One is uh, add a wiki part. Anyone can edit that wiki and do whatever they want. Just uh, our, our build system will catch this, but just try not to break the curl one, which is uh, uh, it's in the examples package, and we build the examples uh, frequently to to verify we don't break anything. So you can you can add anything you want. Just you can even refine the the curl one if you want, but don't break it. <laughs> That's the only thing I ask. Um, but it's free fall for anyone, um, and just go in there and add a part if you feel like it. If you want to, you write a cool part and want to share it or anything, just go there. And there's a question uh, in RC asking about a QMake plugin. You can most certainly write one if you want, and um, we can help you out. I guess we'll be on IRC today and um, um, taking some uh, more questions or more hands-on um, questions about people diving in. And then there's another question I think I want, I'll want i answer about uh, Snapcraft Run. Snapcraft Run just uh, creates an image using uh, the tool we use to create all the Ubuntu core images, which is Ubuntu device flash, and uh, runs it in uh, a virtual, um, as a virtual machine using KVM QMU. So it's not, the, the run is not a container. The, the snap that is installed is contained in that virtual environment, Ubuntu core, but it's not that run runs a, a container. That makes sense. Yeah, so um, so Sergio mentioned, um, like, you know, contributing to Snapcraft. Of course, if you if you want to do to do, you know, source code hacking, which which obviously, like, we love to do. And if you love it as well, like Snapcraft is a, is a great project. I mean, it's, it's well tested. It, it has a really nice developers. Like you can ask questions in, in hash snappy. Um, we, we have, you know, the full machinery of, uh, you know, uh, PyFlakes, uh, PEP8, um, unit tests. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's a very well run project. So if you, if you, you know, if you want to learn or if you just want you to feel right at home at, at good, clean software, like, you know, Snapcraft could be the project for you. And also, there's, there's um, the, all the other plugins as as inspiration. Yes. The examples as inspiration. Like, um, I'm sure if you want to start snapping up your your software, um, you're going to be covered quite well. All right, and I think we can just now move on to to IRC um, and and answer all the questions there. Any last words from you, Sergio? Enjoy snappy the world. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. All right. 
Thanks a lot, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.